Hello and welcome to Stephen University. This week, the lecture is on Mirror Gem. I know many of you have been excited for us to get to this and its uh, second part, um, Ocean Gem, which obviously we'll be talking about next episode. But uh, Mirror Gem is the episode in which Stephen um, is, uh, d- d- decides school is a thing uh, for him, uh, mostly so he can say school is out. <laughs> um, and uh, Pearl sort of wanting to give Stephen information hands him a um a, a magic mirror that should show him the history of, of 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 the gems and some of the gem lore um it doesn't work however um or it doesn't seem to work and uh, then Stephen off on his adventures discovers that it's actually able to communicate to him by replaying moments that have happened and, and words so he starts talking to it and befriends the mirror um ultimately when the gems find out that this is what's happening they become rather concerned uh Stephen um is told to to stop doing what he's doing basically and communicating it with it and hand the mirror back um he sort of becomes a little bit defiant and runs off with the mirror um and uh the mirror asks him to to remove the gem and when he does uh a new gem appears lapis lazuli um who has evidently water based powers um and then she sort of escapes and Stephen gets grounded for his defiance which is one of my favorite parts of the whole episode because it feels so dramatic and important and then he's just grounded which i love i don't know why well, that not always just, tickles me not just defiance he basically slaps her yeah he, slaps I mean, garnet he, he does he in, hit, yeah he hits garnet yeah. in his in his attempt to escape um when he feels like they're sort yeah. of when she's yeah um which by the way if you've got future vision come on garnet get out of the way <laughs> didn't see that one coming so did she <laughs> It's Garnet's fault. <laughs> yeah, it's all Garnet's fault. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, as always, um, uh, th- th- this is described as the mid-season finale, but to me, this th- this and, and its sequel feel like a season finale, cause especially because some of the mm. subsequent seasons are this length. But um, h- how did it feel for you? How did you did you enjoy it? Were you intrigued? Did, did, theories? What, what's what's going on, Chris? Let, catch me. I'm um, way more intrigued. Way more intrigued at the end when the gem appears. Mm-hmm. I think there's. I think the 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 mirror stuff runs the risk of getting a little tedious, but I think it stopped from being proper tedious by the fact that it's quite, it's quite dark and intriguing. And you mm-hmm. kind of think, how would anyone trust this mirror? Like, mm. it's, it's yeah, you weird. Want, you want to employ um, Harry Potter logic. If you can't see where its brain is, don't trust it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they don't like, at the end of the day, he's doing this so he can be one of the kids and be like, Oh, school's finished. So it's not like he's he's lonely and he needs the mirror. Um, you know what I mean? They could have played on that angle. Mm-hmm. Um, but the actual, the idea of a new gem and a new gem, a sort of an evil gem that they have to face is uh, is wicked. That's, that's really cool. Um, and it's definitely an intriguing and um, and a real hook uh, to the story as a, as a cliffhanger, mm-hmm. without a doubt. Um, it's it's slightly it's almost old school Steven uni- University in the it's uh it's randomness of beginning with this plot about school and and Pearl and and setting up a, a school and and then just completely going somewhere different um, to the point where I think I'm just ultra paranoid anyway um, because of the time that I accidentally watched the wrong episode. When it goes on this sort of school tangent, I'm like, I swear this is meant to be called Mir- Mirror Gem. <laughs> and like, even though I'd just seen the title come up, I was still like, is this the right one? And sort of stopped and started it again, checking it. Because um, I think that's that's a testament to how they've not really done those sort of start in one place and then after a minute go somewhere else. Um, not necessarily, you know, done badly. It was fine. It was a nice thing to to get us there um it, but the real hook and the meat of the episode is the uh is the evil green ranger or steven universe's equivalent well it's an interesting situation because and i'm gonna i'm gonna talk very carefully here because obviously know where it goes so it's a bit so i've got to be very careful but what this episode does is raise a bunch of questions that when i first watched it, i remember feeling like i should have been asking these questions before now if the gems are gems that project their bodies and these monsters they're fighting have gems were they also you know what i mean like you you have mm. you, you so many questions like from this mm. because suddenly an object with a with a gem in it becomes 
a, a, a sort of a gem like person like the the ones that that you know like the ones that we we've come, grown to know, sort of know and love and, and sort of uh, uh, take on board as like as characters it it raises way more questions than it answers and then of course uh, lapis's reaction to our gems is so strong and she mm. and she, and she she claims they knew she was in there which then makes you question our gems because then you're going well if they knew she was in there is that captivity is it slavery we should you know what what's what's going on here what is this this is this mm. is is there something really cruel well, going I assume on it's a, it, well, it's weird cuz cuz i assume it was an evil person that they've like trapped but if that's the case, you wouldn't give Stephen the mirror, would you? That you wouldn't be that, you wouldn't be that stupid. So yes. they were very did, cavalier did not... with the mirror. They they just gave it yeah. to Stephen, a hundred percent. So did they not realize she was trapped in there, mm-hmm. or you know, is that, she lying? Or y- yeah, I mean that's that's the board? interesting that's the interesting a- a element, isn't it? Which is that you know, she she sort of. What she says is almost contradicted by the fact that they're that cavalier with the mirror. You're right, because it and and mm. Pearl describes it as a as a as a gem object that can that can you know show the past. She doesn't yeah, really. She references Go she on. references the Galaxy Wars, which is obviously pretty intriguing. And I assumed it was going into the episode would then go into explore them, which it doesn't. So I don't know whether that. Well, I presume that comes up later, but I don't know whether it. Comes up in the very next episode, or or comes up in uh, in the you know in the future of the show. Well, I mean, I won't s- tell you what the next episode handles in terms of like mythology, but I will say the next episode follows on almost immediately from where we've left off here. Um, yeah, yeah, as you could probably guess by knowing it's sort of a two parter. Mm. Um, also interesting about this is that they very much put Stephen in the middle because whatever 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 is going on whether lapis is intentionally lying or whether she's just got the wrong end of the stick um about the, about the gems um steven's very much caught in the middle here because clearly she and him get on very well. she's she's found a friend in steven almost and she can't believe he's released her for a start and when and when she creates the sort of um the the the, the, the sort of the way out through the through the sea she sort of parts it Moses style. Um, that's the cut scene. She just parts the scene, and just goes Mo- Moses style. <laughs> I don't know why. That's the dumbest thing I've ever said in my life. I had a joke in. I had a joke in stand up connected to Moses. It was about um, my great nan was once waiting for an envelope and uh, waiting for an envelope. Wait, oh, sorry, it's boiling in here. Waiting for an ambulance and the ambulance was late and it said, "Oh, sorry, we were late. Traffic." And I was like, but you can part traffic. That's like Moses being late and being like, oh, sorry, I'm late. It was the sea. <laughs> Jesus. Or should I say, <laughs> dad. That was, <laughs> that was the joke. There you go. Thank Thank you. You. <laughs> sorry. I will, take, I will take your pity laughs. <laughs> um, but when... Uh, what, uh, just getting us back on track um, because I've, I've I feel like this is gonna this will this will slide very quickly if I'm not careful. Um, when Lapis sort of turns to leave through her Moses parting, she says, "Come on, Stephen, we'll we'll go home." And he's like, "What?" And she sort of is like, "Fine, I guess I'm leaving alone then," and leaves. And that in itself is intriguing because you've got to think she sees that he's different to the to, to the other gems. But what is it she's seeing? What separates them to her, and what's her impression of the gems, and where does it, what's it based on? You know, uh, and, and you know, it's a, it's a show that likes to keep its cards close to its vest in these early episodes. So I mean, it, it, these are questions that you you know you you may not get answers to as as quickly as you'd maybe hope, but I, I promise they're coming. Um, but the the dramatic element of it is all there. It's really present. And what I love about this episode is it it it, it goes from happy clappy. The show you you know you 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 sort of been watching for twenty odd episodes at this point to something much deeper very quickly and uh, without skipping a beat and 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 it doesn't feel jarring somehow um, and that is that is a feat of writing <laughs> in itself mm-hmm. um, so how, what what are you thinking what's theories thoughts ideas going home um, I don't does that, I, does that strike I don't know you as no, 
Uh, I thought I got the feeling from his behavior that she was almost slightly giving off like Horacrux vibes, like, and that's a. I know you've asked me a question, but I'm asking you a question. But do you think they did enough in the making the mirror seem friendly and making it seem on Stephen's side, or making it seem hypnotic enough to not make Stephen just seem like a knob that that should have realized and shouldn't have been so childish in the way he's like no no it's mine or or like i'm i must be really important at the very beginning like i just uh, do you i don't i'm not sure what i think about that i'm not sure whether they did hit that line or whether actually steven seemed quite childish in in points it's a little bit of both i think because i think they do enough to make the, it clear that the mirror does have a conscious thoughts and is you know, more than an animate object. And if he feels frustrated because the gems don't see that, you know, uh, I could see a child acting the way he acted. Does that make sense? Like, uh, you know, he's mm-hmm. he's not matured enough yet. So yeah, you're right. The the behavior is rather childish. He's 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 not. He's he's you know he's not using his words. <laughs> um, you know, he's it's very much an emotional reaction. But what's I think what counters that is that you i or at least when i watched it um both times i sort of felt like yeah he's this kid that's found this thing it was supposed to be this inanimate object it's clearly got some sort of mind of its own um he's he's piled around with it on the beach you know for <laughs> for for a day it's clearly got some sort of consciousness inside of it what whatever that form might take as far as he can see as a, as a, as a from what he has observed it 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 needs help or, or something. It's it's it, it. There's more to it than the gems even seem to know, based on what they told him when they handed it to him. So when he brings it to them and tries to explain that, and they react so very suddenly, Stephen, give it back. This is trouble. What there's a problem, and he doesn't understand why they would be reacting that way. I could totally see him taking that badly because you know they're they're essentially saying either that something is very very well at first they're saying that he's wrong and then they're saying that that it's dangerous hand it back um and, and he's not seen any evidence of that so i could i could totally see you justifying a child acting the way he acts in this episode and of course the good thing about this show is as i've, I've as we've expressed in the past Stephen matures quite a lot over the course of the show so i i feel like they did enough but could that be skewed by the fact that i've seen the evolution of the show so I'm I'm giving it I'm giving it a pass. How did you feel about? It? I'm guessing you weren't sure. That I'm guessing you're still not sure by the sound of it. Yeah, no, I'm still not sure. Like I say, I just think he was a bit childish in moments. Um, that didn't it didn't dampen the episode at all. And I suppose you're right. If you if you link it back to well, he's he's that caring and he's got that much of his mother in him that he mm-hmm. wants to look after everyone. Then of course that reaction would make sense. But mm-hmm. I think it really as an episode. It it comes alive when when he go when he when the when the the hypnotic creepiness of the mirror playing stuff back ramps up when he runs home the you know the hit with um Garnet and the and the gem being released and attacking them like great visuals in all of that um really dark engaging visuals um and just a a really good um you know cliffhanger like it's i don't mean it as a as a joke to compare it to the to the green power ranger saga in power rangers because you know for for the kids we were watching that it felt very adult it felt very epic and it felt very exciting to see a a new form of of the people we'd already got to know and Mm -hmm. i think i think all of that actually applies to this as well yeah, I would agree with that. And because I think I remember when I first watched it, the, the the excitement of seeing another gem take sort of a human esque mm. form and, a, and 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 communicate and and you know and and, and the, the the exist in this way was was a big deal. And I was I was kind of blown away at the even the concept of there being more gems. And what's which is weird because mm. the, the, they have clearly referenced before, you know, gem society, gem buildings. You know, they went to that. They went to those sort of fields where they were. They were like swords and shields, and it was clearly the, the the remains of some sort of gem-based battlefield. So, and it was it was huge in scale. So you can't. I mean, I suppose it's stupid to think they're the only 
they're the only gems. I mean, it really it doesn't make sense, <laughs> you know. Um, mm. And then, of course, this episode ends us on the most intriguing note of all, in my opinion, which is Lapis talking about going home. Yeah. And, uh, Where's that? Well, exactly. Exactly. So I, yeah. I remember when I first watched it, that being one of the most like, oh my God, what's 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 going on what's like that referring to what yeah. do we not know like obviously a yeah, lot yeah, yeah. this was the moment i realized that like oh this mythology isn't just like like one day we'll find out the one thing about the gems and we'll yeah, it's we'll yeah, yeah clearly the mythology is deep and gonna take a lot of time to get through there is clearly mm. a huge amount of backstory here that we don't know um and, and, and this is just the tip of a very, very large iceberg. And uh, like once I realized that that depth existed, it was like, this is... I mean, I, I find it hard to imagine someone watching this episode and not immediately wanting to watch the next. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm excited and intrigued and, and looking forward to watching the next one. Good. There you go. So um, yeah. and one other little thing just to note, as uh, you, you may have noticed at the beginning when he rings Connie, um, she is wearing her glasses again, but she has not got the lenses in them. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool continuity. Yeah, it's very good. It's very because when I first, I remember when I was first watching it, I was a bit like, "Hey, those are her glasses." I was like, yeah. "Doesn't her eyesight supposed to be healed?" And then I, and then I, re- I looked closer and was like, "Oh no, wait! You can clearly see there is no longer a lens in there where yeah. there was before." Yeah, it's, it's very well done. It's a, re- it's a really nice touch. Yeah, it is. It's very good because obviously, I, I guess she was right. She was like, "What will I tell my parents?" Like, so maybe, maybe she's keeping yeah. them on without the lenses just she's- to keep the parents at bay. Yeah, well, she t- she taps the lenses out at the end of last week's episode. So, oh, she did. Yeah, we saw that happen. So, yeah, 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 yeah there you go. So, yeah. Cool. There you there go. We go. Any other thoughts you want to add, Chris? Any theories about what's going on? No, like I, only like the kind of horrorcruxy thing, um, and the the idea that her, her going home suggests potentially maybe like the kind of the stereotypical version of that story is she goes to a place that she thinks is home and there's no, like all the other gems have gone. There's no gems left. Mm -hmm. Maybe they do that. Um, That seems logical. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. That's otherwise, uh, certainly uh, otherwise, why wouldn't otherwise, why wouldn't they be there? You know? Yep. Um, So maybe we see that. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's all. That's what I got. Great. So we will see you next week. For Ocean Gem. Do we just end it mm-hmm. there? Yeah. It doesn't work without the I've been Dan Doolin. Yeah, it doesn't, does it? All right. Whack it in. I've been Dan Doolin. I've been Chris Billingham. And we'll see you next week as we discuss Ocean Gem. That's well whacked in, that.